Hey, so in today's video, we are going to be painting, and I'm really excited to do this one because it's going to be really colorful, and I, I love colorful plants more than anything. So let's get started, and we'll see how it turns out. Someone asked me a couple weeks ago to show really my mental process behind how to approach a subject like this. I posted this photo in the Gab community and I did have a response about this particular photo and the fact that I would be painting it. I got really excited about filming this um, and kind of talking it through. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. The background was extremely busy. I was looking at it trying to figure out really what colors would complement the subject of this photo. The brown, like dead leaves in the background of the photo really looked ugly to me. Um, the flower is also centered in the composition, which is sometimes not a good thing. You typically don't want to center a subject in the middle of a photo because it doesn't create as much visual interest. So I spent a lot of time mapping out this flower and I'm just going to call it a flower. It's a succulent, but um, I really took a long time. Actually, I correct myself. This one is a tropical flower that um, I remember I found in Sherman Library. I uh, went there as a day trip to find some inspiration and I took a bunch of photos of tropical flowers at Sherman Library. If you've never been there, the gardens are small but extremely inspirational and it is a great place to take your own subject photos. So I highly recommend a little mini trip, just a couple hours out of your day, maybe just one. Check out what they have to offer because they have a hot house with a bunch of tropical varieties and they have a bunch of other native flowers to California throughout the garden. Since the whole thing with COVID, um, going to the gardens and experiencing nature has been really a challenge. Um, I'm not going to lie. I still went on jogs and I was able to take photos of plants and really still experience some uh you know, bits of nature, but nothing that naturally grows. It's just, you know, all manicured plants that people have in their gardens or their front lawns. And I didn't realize how much I'd missed an actual garden with a lot of native plants. And it's still manicured, but it's a little bit different. And when I, you know, entered Sherman Library, I just sat down for a few minutes and just took in all of the the feelings of being there and it really made a difference i actually got a little bit emotional because um i just realized how much i had missed that experience and that connection to nature and how much it affects my work the ways that it inspires me to think about plants that i'm painting or just the way that it inspires me to start working on projects and find inspiration. Sometimes you you don't feel real inspired and you know, that's okay too. There are days where you just wanna observe. I think that's the most important part of pla painting plants and most botanical artists will tell you this, that the most important part of the process is observing and looking at the plants. You should spend a lot of time looking at the plant before you dive into painting it and train your eye to really see the things that um, other people are not looking at but only what an artist would see like for instance here i'm working on doing the underside of the plant and creating definition here in shadow so that the upper part of the leaves really uh, pop out and start to fold towards the viewer this creates kind of the sensation that the leaves are real and it involves a lot of glazing. For this piece, I did a lot, a lot of glazing, many, many different layers, and it took me hours to work on this. At the very end of the project, I actually decided to dive in with colored pencils and gouache because I just was not achieving the sort of definition that I wanted and I wasn't getting to those rich tonal values. Um, in order to really make the painting pop. At the very end, I actually just... So here I'm really adding in shadow and I'm focusing on what those tonal values are gonna be. 
I looked at the photograph to really guide me and I noticed that there were some green tonal values in the leaves and petals of this flower. I really latched on to that to get some of the realism that's going on in the photograph and insert that into the painting. I know that my words right now are really poor for me describing my process, but um, I think it's important to look at the, the petals and really analyze how transparent the petals are. If the petals are transparent, then you're going to have some other colors in them because you're going to be picking up on those colors in your background and foreground. So really observe and if the petals are not transparent then they'll be more shiny so you're going to want to preserve some of the lighter areas of the painting and not glaze over those that's kind of what i'm doing here i'm building up color continuously and getting more darker values in there really strategically working on that and kind of ignoring the background because I know I'm gonna go in there and paint it with gouache instead. I think I was about halfway through this painting where I decided that I would really need to do mixed media for this one. Um, I wasn't achieving the darkest darks that I could get and I know I could have done that with more layers with watercolors but it just felt too light and I wanted more of that heaviness that you get with gouache so what I ended up doing is going in with colored pencils and going in with gouache and really building upon what I had here. It turned out that the painting looks very nice. I actually have it hanging on my wall in my studio right now. And I love the painterly effect that I achieved by using gouache for the background. Um, I used a flat head brush for that and I did rough brush strokes and made it very as I put it, painterly. And what I mean by that is I didn't smooth in the brush strokes. I left them kind of rough. And yeah, it turned out to be an amazing painting. I'm giving you a little snippet of my backyard right now and the Frenchie that we just adopted because she is absolutely adorable. She's a little munchkin who will have a debut in one of my future videos. But for now, I'm just gonna go back to painting and we're gonna wrap this one up. Lots of purple in this one. It was in the original photo. I thought it really worked and I went with it. Um, by now you're probably getting tired of watching me glazing, but I wanted to really be truthful with this one and show you how long it took me because this one took me several days to finish. Um, I worked a lot at night on this painting, which is why the lighting is kind of bad in some of the video clips, but it was really the only time I had to work on it, so I had to just persevere and try and get it as bright as possible, so you have to forgive me about the lighting. It does change from clip to clip, and this one really, like, this was a hard painting. I had to really keep in mind the form of the flower Without a background to really go off of for tonal value, um, it can kind of be a challenge to get your main subject to have enough weight to where it looks real. Um, I would recommend next time, if I were to do this again, I would probably block in the background and then start glazing um, to really achieve the tonal value that's more accurate for this picture but I'm not going to go down that path anymore because I've talked about tonal value a lot in this video and you probably don't want to hear any more. We're just going to continue with this one. I'm adding in dark lines to create shadow and I'm adding more texture to the petals themselves. Um, and this is where I dove in with the colored pencils and I really worked on this a lot. You can tell at this point, I have added many layers of colored pencil and it looks a little bit rough. I just keep going over the areas that have uh, more of a textured look and I'm adding variation of length and darkness to each petal. Um, you'll see that I also darkened the petals that are in the background and I got them to really fall backward. Um, keeping the center of the painting really light 
to keep it moving towards the viewer. I really love the red that I added on here. And then once I got the background in there, it really just worked very well for me. Um, things that I would do differently next time, I would definitely smooth out the areas where I left white lines around each petal. Um, there are certain things that can make your painting look really rough. And for me, it's just leaving these lines that are not real smooth. And I tend to do that with my art a lot. I think it's just a painterly style. Here, I also corrected some compositional issues that I was having with the painting. Um, I didn't want the background to be too detailed because once you get too much detail in the background, the viewer is going to be looking at the background instead. And I wanted the focal point to still continue to be the flower at the front. So I used my imagination a little bit. I followed the photo and I kind of took like some of the petal ideas from the photo, but then I adapted it so that the movement in the painting um, looked very organic. And here I am with the flathead brush really going in and adding some dark, dark blue tones. And this is a color that didn't come straight out of the tube. I actually mixed a few colors together to achieve it. Um, I also realized that it needed to blur together a little bit because typically the background does, uh, the farther you are away from the subject, it should be a little more blurry to the eye. So I thought, it would imitate a natural tropical scene to have the, the background around the flower really just kind of blur out into whatever's around it. Gouache will really, um, it'll look kind of like watercolors if you use too much water in it, but that's not good. You don't, you don't necessarily want gouache to look like watercolors because when you reactivate the gouache, meaning like you go over it with another layer, it's not going to mix very well. It's going to um, bleed together and reactivate the bottom layer. So you don't want it to do that because with watercolors, you can glaze and just go with layer over layer over layer. You can do multiple layers with gouache, but you have to remember that they reactivate and it could look really ugly if you use the wrong color combination. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you ran across my channel and you really like these videos and they help you out, uh, please like and subscribe. I make videos every week, pretty much try to put them out on Tuesdays like clockwork and I publish new content about watercolor painting all the time. I'm actually working on a resource on my website called The Last Pigment and I have a watercolor course there, a kit, and a coloring book. So if you struggle with having inspiration or you just don't know where to start, go check out my website. I have a lot of resources there. I really hope that you like the way this painting turned out. I know I did and I ended up putting it on my wall. So you'll probably see it in other studio vlogs as the fine finalized piece. It's actually super vibrant. The gouache really ended up being beautiful. I hope you enjoyed that and I think I'm gonna chill on my patio for a little bit and enjoy the sun. So I'll see you in the next video.